In today's lecture, we'll be discussing the structures associated with leaf anatomy. The leaf represents one of the major adaptations of the plant body for the purpose of photosynthesis. A feature characteristic of most leaves, which makes it well adapted for the purposes of photosynthesis, is its broad, flat shape, which maximizes its surface area for the collection of sunlight. The particular type of leaf anatomy that I will be discussing in today's lecture concerns those associated with C3 plants, which are so named after the manner in which they utilize carbon dioxide to make sugars. The particular structures associated with the C3 leaf that will be the focus of today's lecture include the epidermis, cuticle, stomates and guard cells, the mesophyll layers, as well as the vascular bundles. As we will see, many of these features function in maximizing photosynthetic efficiency as well as in water conservation of the plant body. The cuticle is a waxy secretion of the plant's epidermal cells, which is adapted for reducing water loss from the plant body. This waxy layer is especially critical for the survival of terrestrial or land plants. The thickness of the cuticle can vary depending on the environment in which the plant lives. It tends to be thinnest in aquatic species and thickest in xerophytes or plants that are indigenous to arid environments. The epidermis represents the outermost cell layer associated with the plant body. With respect to the leaf structure, it is found on both the upper and lower surface and consists of cuboidal or cube-shaped cells. It is the epidermal cells that produce and secrete the waxy cuticle that waterproofs and covers all aerial parts of the plant body. As we will shortly illustrate, the lower epidermis of the leaf is interrupted by pores known as stomates. These openings allow for the plant body to exchange vital gases with their surroundings. The primary function of stomates along the lower epidermis of the leaf is for the uptake of carbon dioxide, one of the primary raw materials in the photosynthetic pathway, and the release of water vapor by a process known as transpiration. As we will discuss later on in this chapter, it is transpiration which acts as the driving force for the migration of water from the root system into the leaves where some of it can act as a raw material for photosynthesis. The size of the stomates, and therefore the rate at which these gases can be exchanged, is regulated by cells found on either side of these openings known as guard cells. When first exposed to light, guard cells have a tendency to take up potassium ions from the surrounding tissue. As a result, the solute concentration of these cells increases, thus resulting in a corresponding decrease in their solute potential. Consequently, water has a tendency to flow into these cells by way of plasmodesmata. The uptake of water by guard cells causes them to swell and move apart from one another, having the effect of widening the diameter of the stomate. As a result, the plant is now free to exchange gases between itself and the surrounding environment, and photosynthesis can commence. Not only do open stomates allow for the uptake of carbon dioxide into the plant body to act as a raw material for photosynthesis, but it also provides an avenue for the escape of water vapor into the surrounding air, a process known as transpiration. Although excess transpiration can lead to the desiccation or drying out of the plant body, it is necessary for driving water from the root system into the leaves of the shoot system so that some of it can act as a raw material for photosynthesis. As this diagram illustrates, for every one water molecule that leaves the leaf, as water vapor by means of transpiration, it exerts a tug or a pull 
on all of the other water molecules within the xylem of the plant body. Since these water molecules are attached by way of weak hydrogen bonds, the water molecules are gradually, incrementally pulled up the xylem, eventually reaching the leaf tissue, whereby some of those waters can react with carbon dioxide in the presence of light to make sugars by way of photosynthesis, whereby some of the water molecules, as previously stated, leave the leaf by way of transpiration. As this slide attempts to illustrate, on hot, dry days, transpiration rates tend to be very high, and as a result, plant tissue loses a fair amount of water to the surrounding air. As a result of this excess water loss, cells of the plant body, including guard cells, lose a significant amount of turgor pressure. With regards to the guard cells, they begin to shrivel, closing the stomate and preventing any additional water loss to the surrounding air. As we can see, this has the overall effect of the plant body beginning to wilt or flag. Although the closing of the stomates prevents gas exchange and thus blocks the plant's ability to photosynthesize, the conservation of water under these conditions is a more pressing need. This buys the plant some time until sufficient water accumulates in the soil such that its cells can become turgid again and photosynthesis can resume. Because of their role in gas exchange, particularly in transpirational water loss, natural selection would have favored the accumulation of stomates and guard cells more on the lower epidermis than on the upper epidermis of the leaf. As we can see, natural selection would not have favored the accumulation of stomates and guard cells within the upper epidermis of the leaf because any such plants would have had their guard cells, which are light sensitive, exposed to higher intensities of light throughout the day. As a consequence, the stomates would be more likely to remain open for longer periods, resulting in a higher rate of transpiration, leaving the plant at risk of desiccation. Upon entering the leaf through open stomates, air encounters a network of empty spaces that are derived from a loose aggregation of tissue known as the spongy mesophyll. The extensive network of air spaces within this layer presents a large amount of surface area that allows for the rapid exchange of gases between these spaces and the plant tissue itself. Specifically, carbon dioxide will diffuse from these air spaces into the surrounding tissue to be used as one of the major raw materials for photosynthesis and excess water vapor will diffuse out from the surrounding tissue into these air spaces and ultimately out of the leaf through open stomates. Immediately above the spongy mesophyll and below the epidermis lies a layer of columnar cells known as the palisade mesophyll. These cells contain the highest concentration of chloroplasts anywhere in the plant body and are thus regarded as the main sites of photosynthesis. Veins that are observable when examining a leaf are referred to as vascular bundles because they contain the conducting or vascular tissue of the plant body. Vascular bundles consist of a layer of non-photosynthetic cells known as bundle sheath cells surrounding xylem and phloem tissue. Xylem tissue is responsible for the upward migration of water from the root system to the leaves in the shoot system. As previously mentioned, the driving force behind this upward migration is transpiration through open stomates. In contrast, phloem tissue is responsible for the distribution of sugars formed as a product of photosynthesis. The bundle sheath cells that comprise the veins found throughout most leaves are continuous with the conducting tissue found in the stem as well as the root system of the plant body.